It is a pretty fun night for pitching tonight in MLB DFS because we got some really good names littering the top end of the pitching board. We got Musgrove, Burns, Ray, Bueller, Valdez, Sandoval, guys like that. And it does make things pretty fun from a DFS perspective. And I think the good thing is that for tonight, I'm not as worried about jamming in high salary bats as I was last night. And obviously the Phillies didn't play out very well. So maybe that's part of the reason we're uh, looking down at hitter a bit for today. but. I do think it's a fun slate. It's a, a me slate where I can kind of choose to the pitchers I like, decide who I want to prioritize, and feel good about that, not feel like I'm missing out at hitters. So let's dive on in and get you set for this Tuesday main slate. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. You're going to break down Tuesday's 10-game main slate with locks up for 7, 10 p.m. Eastern. For this evening, the second game of the doubleheaders for the Nats and Diamondbacks and the Giants and Mets are not on the main slate. So typically in the past, we've had doubleheaders on main slates, you know, back before COVID. It was a nightmare because you had to decide, okay, will this guy play? What time will this game start? Stuff like that. Don't worry about that for today. You're good to go. So ignore the second halves of those doubleheaders and feel hopefully a lot more at ease as we get towards lock for tonight. couple weather notes for today. All temperature related and not towards rain so that's a good thing for sure just 46 degrees in boston for the blue jays and red sox i would downgrade hitters in that one it is 43 degrees in chicago for the cubs and the rays i would downgrade hitters there as well 54 degrees in kansas city for the royals and twins downgrade hitters there and finally it's 56 degrees in oakland for the a's and orioles slight downgrade there as well so a lot of places that are cooler for today some spots with some retractable roofs which may help a bit but overall a bit cooler than it has been the past couple of weeks so that should play a factor in our stacks we'll still talk about a couple of those spots in the stacking section before or for today before we get there though got to quick remind you to make sure you are subscribed to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts because we have not just the solo shot every weekday we've got nhl from tom vecchio usc pga NASCAR, all in the same place at the exact same feed. So hit subscribe, get those podcasts as they go up and maximize your research time after you listen before the slate locks to give yourself more time to decide whether or not you agree with our takes on stuff. Also, we had uh, Dan Zimborski of Fangraphs on covering the spread yesterday, breaking down his thoughts on which early season numbers to trust, which ones to be skeptical of. Some teams he thinks the market is undervaluing right now. So if you like Dan's work over at Fangraphs, check that out by searching for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, sports fans, FanDuel is now offering an exciting twist to the beloved Same Game Parlay. Now introducing Same Game Parlay Plus, which allows you to combine Same Game Parlays across multiple games. All you have to do is head over to the FanDuel Sportsbook and navigate to the Same Game Parlay tab of the first game you are interested in. Select multiple bets in the first game and then plus it up. Now you can add more bets from other same game parlay labeled games. Head over to FanDuel Sportsbook today and opt into the same game parlay plus. Must be 21 plus and present in eligible states. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. It was the FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. Or in West Virginia, visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Tuesday main slate, Joe Musgrove is the highest salaried pitcher on FanDuel checking in at $11,000, followed by Corbin Burns at 10 8 We got Robbie Ray at $9,900. Walker Bueller's 97. Fromber Valdez is 95. We have Patrick Corbin, Kyle Gibson, and Justin Steele as the others at $8,000 or higher. And I think when you're looking at the pitching for today, I was talking about there are good options, and there are good options. But despite that, I still think that the top option for today is very clear. And that, to me, is Corbin Birds at the top. And I think you put him at the top and you forget it from there. With Coors being less attractive for today, I am okay with Burns being definitively the top guy at 10-8. Um, he's facing the Pirates at home and the Pirates predictably struggling this year. 
They are last on the slate in both WRC plus and isolated slugging against righties based on their current active roster since the start of last year. So a large sample strikeout rate about average at 23%, but those low WRC plus and ISO numbers about what you expect. So the situation for Burns is very good. And he seems pretty close to the guy he was uh, he, he was last year to open this year. Strikeouts are down a bit, and the batted ball numbers have gotten worse. But most of that was from opening day, when he just seemed a bit off. I was on him against the Cubs. Didn't seem great there. Last time out, they bounced back. A, an 18.6% swing in strike rate in his second start. He had eight strikeouts across seven innings, and he also threw 97 pitches. So pitch count no longer concerned with Corbin Burns. The swing and strike rate through two starts combined is now 16.1%, which is very much in line with where he was last year. The velocity is good too, despite pitching in some colder weather, which does play a factor in velocity. So 10-8 is a lot to pay for Corbin Burns, but I was kind of expecting like almost 12K for today. So, you know, I'll take it for sure. Uh, when I don't need to splurge at, as much a hitter, he's very worth it. So I feel very comfortable making Burns my top play of the day. The second pitching slot behind Burns depends on your comfort level with Robbie Ray. And his velocity is down big. And it's enough where it is a pretty massive red flag. We just have to decide if it's enough to fully push us off Ray for today. I'm on the fence about it personally. The velocity is legitimately rough because last year he averaged 94.6 miles per hour on his four-seam fastball. That is down two ticks this year to 92.6. His slider is down 1.7 miles per hour and those decreases in velocity are translated to decreases in key metrics. Specifically, his swing and strike rate against him is 10.9%, down from 15.5% last year. So I think the concerns are legit. There are a couple caveats worth mentioning, though. The first one is that those games are Minneapolis and Chicago, and those games are very cold, and velocity is typically down when it is colder. He was also facing the Twins and White Sox on the road, and those two teams have a lot of guys who can bang lefties. So does that fully erase the concerns? Not for me. I, I think mean, that's why he's not the top arm for me. But I do think there is a chance that the dips for Ray were due to matchup and weather. Those things will not be as big of a factor for tonight. He's facing the Rangers. They are definitely an improved offense from what they were last year. But they're still not an elite. This active roster has a 24% strikeout rate against lefties since the start of last year with a 7% walk rate. So... It could be rough for Ray, and if you want more safety, find the salary to get to Joe Musgrove. But I think if you're just gunning for ceiling, you know, you got Burns locked in for cash games, you want to go for a ceiling in, in tournaments, I think I like Ray's more at $9,900, despite what I think are pretty legitimate concerns around his first couple of starts. So to me, Robbie Ray is number two behind Corbin Burns, despite the fact I do have legitimate concerns around his velocity and his start to the season. As far as value play goes, I think you have two options, both of whom are in terrible matchups. Those guys are Nathan Eovaldi and Max Freed. Freed gets the Dodgers, Eovaldi gets the Blue Jays, and Eovaldi really struggling with hard contact, and that's not something I'd want to do against the Jays. So I think I'm going to go with Freed here, but Eovaldi does have more strikeout upside and is at least an option for today. As for Freed, the batted ball suppression is why I am here. His slider velocity is up this year, and it's something that started with him last year. And over his past 11 starts, with that slider velocity being up, he's allowed just a 24% fly ball rate with a 36% hard hit rate. Those are very good numbers, and I think we can buy into them because Freed, over his career, has been good at suppressing hard contact. Not surprisingly, this has led to a 2.22 ERA for Freed across his 11 starts. Now, his first two starts this year were not crazy good, and they came against lesser competition, but I'm betting he'll be good over the long run this year. The swing and strike rate last time out for Freed was 14.1%. For him, that is a very high mark. The Dodgers, not surprisingly, very good against lefties, so it's not an ideal situation. But what we're getting with Freed is a good real-world pitcher for $7,400, and there may be some extra upside in, in him this year with the slider potentially being a bit different. So I will take that upside and roll with it. Again, though, I would at least look into Eovaldi if you want another lower salaried option uh, at pitcher. But I think to me, Freed is my preferred guy because the bat of ball suppression, I think, is better and sustainably so with regards to him. Let's move now to the stacking section. I talked about Burns and the pitching section. And if we're going to get there to 10-8, we need some value batters to make that work. And I think we can actually get those 
from Burns' teammates. They're facing JT Brubaker. Brubaker has done some interesting stuff since the start of last year, and it's it kind of interesting. You know, I th- think that he's shown some spurts of competency, but he struggled to open this year, which is interesting because he's lowered his four-seam fastball usage quite a bit from where it was last year, and hasn't worked so far because he has met as many walks as strikeouts. He has a 5.88 skill interactive ERA. He is allowed a 52% fly ball rate. That's pretty rough. And he's also not getting a lot of whiffs. His swing and strike rate is 10.7%. So that's rough so far, which means that Brubaker could go back to what he did last year. But, and I would expect that as well. But even, even in last year, he had a four or a 5.36 ERA. He's not a big round ball guy. Did let us some hard contact. So the two routes for Brubaker are A, he can stay doing what he's been doing his first two starts, or B, he can go back to what he was last year. And I think that either of those would make it okay to stack the Brewers for today. So I think it's okay to take the discounts here and be high on the Brewers from a stacking perspective, uh, making it a bit, a bit easier for you to use a Corbin Burns as your pitcher for today. So looking at this Milwaukee team, again, we're talking about all of the places with cold temperatures for today. Milwaukee will not be one of them. I'm guessing the roof will be closed, which would make it 70 degrees there. It would make it just one of three games with the temperature at 70 or higher. So I do think that grades out well for Milwaukee overall for today. I'd specifically be highest in the lefties here. And I was looking, you know, researching for this like yesterday and before they played their game last night, I was like, yeah, you know, Yelich is hitting the ball hard, but not lofting it. And I was like, okay, that's at least something. I wasn't like fully on board. And then he hits like a, a bomb, like 6,000 feet to center field. So I'm like, okay, we're in, we're back in a Christian Yelich. Obviously he's there for sure. Roddy Telez, Colton Wong, Omar Narvaez. They're all high on our list. And I will use those guys here as a stacking focal point when trying to jam in Corbin Burns. As far as our second stack, you know, we get the, the good weather with Milwaukee. We will not get that for our second and third stacks. But there aren't enough good options in good weather spots, at least for me, to be fully on board with going there. I do like the Twins, despite the weather, in Kansas City. They're facing Carlos Hernandez, and he's gotten good results as a starter. He has a 3.56 ERA since he moved into the rotation last year. The peripheral zone, not quite there. In 13 appearances, Hernandez has a 5.31 skill interactive ERA. His strikeout rate is 16%, which means he's letting up a lot of balls in play. The batted ball numbers are fine. Uh, A 37% hard hit rate, 39% fly ball rate. Those are okay. And they're more okay when you're getting strikeouts and limiting the balls in play. If you're letting up a lot of balls in play, it can become a pretty big issue. We saw the downsides of that in his most recent start where Hernandez was facing Cleveland. He led up four runs across four and a third innings. He has just two total strikeouts across his two starts. And that's not something you expect to translate into good long-term results. So I think eventually we'll see regression from Hernandez with this sub-4 ERA as a starter. And that could happen tonight against this Twins offense. There's a chance that Byron Buxton is back with the Twins for today. He is scheduled to travel with the team. And he said Monday that he was optimistic about his knee. So wouldn't be shocked if he's back in there. I wouldn't necessarily expect it based on the initial diagnosis about a week. But could happen for sure. One guy I find super interesting here, though, is Luis Arise. He is never hit for power, which means I've never liked Arise for DFS. He is lofting the ball a bit more this year, though. So although I'm not expecting a huge power binge, I'm becoming more open to him. I have very rarely used Arise in my DFS playing life, but I'm open to at least considering it here based on a slight uptick in his fly ball rate. He doesn't hit the ball like super soft or anything, so... Not typically my cup of tea, but I'm more receptive to him now than I have been previously with that fly ball rate potentially ticking up at least a bit. As far as the third stack goes, I've liked Yusei Kikuchi for a couple separate times uh, throughout his career. He always looks like he'll have a velo spike at the beginning of the year and he can get some strikeouts. And, you know, I'll take those two things for sure. But there are some lingering issues that are still there with Kikuchi. And I think I will stack the Red Sox against him for today. We'll note before we dive too much into this, though. The Red Sox might be in the midst of a COVID outbreak. So if they lose guys like, you know, Xander Bogart, J.D. Martinez, Trevor Story, and they lose like the guys to be turning to against lefties, downgrade them for sure. I don't know who might be out for today, but it sounds like there is some weird stuff going on there. So just keep an eye on that with that. Specifically for Kikuchi, the big issue he has had is hard contact. Because if you look back for the full season last year, 
Kikuchi led up a 47% hard hit rate. That is a crazy high number. And it led to a 4.41 ERA, despite having the good aforementioned play discipline numbers. And it got worse as the season went along. But now Kikuchi goes to a new team, and that can sometimes lead to changes. They'll unlock something, fresh set of eyes, stuff like that. So I was curious how Kikuchi would look in his, his Blue Jays debut, but it didn't change in that one key area. He let up 12 balls in play in his first start, and nine of those had an exit velo of at least 75 miles per hour. His fly ball rate allowed was 50%. We've seen Kikuchi let up just four or just 10 home runs across 10 starts or 13 starts with more changeups. So the homers haven't been a huge issue so far, but now he's typically playing in more hitter friendly parks. This will not be that for tonight, given the weather, but I think it's a good profile for stacking. I will roll with the Red Sox here and see if they can see if Kikuchi can turn things around. If he can't, the Red Sox could really knock him around the yard. And when doing so, I'm going to be high on Bobby Dahlbeck. He is off to a brutal start this year. The results are bad, but a lot of that seems to come down to bad luck. He has a 250 actual Woba, like his actual Woba is 250, but his expected Woba, baseball savant, is 355. So Dahlbeck is still smacking the ball. His strikeout rate is actually down to 30%, and he torches lefties. So I know I will not be alone in doing this, but Bobby Dahlbeck will be a key focus for me tonight at $2,600. And I'm not saying he's going to double donk, but I wouldn't be shocked if he did. So Bobby Dahlbeck, Bobby Dahlbeck, uh, a focal point for me for tonight with the Red Sox. And keep an eye on who is not available for today because it could be kind of bad based on the initial reports to the Red Sox. But at least as of right now, I am on board with stacking them for today. Things to watch for this slate. We do have a Coors Field slate for today. Uh, the Phillies are at Coors again today. I obviously don't mind them, but it's not as good of a spot against Kyle Freeland. He has struggled to open the season, but the bat of ball numbers has still been very good with a lot of ground balls. So I'm on board of the Phillies for sure, but I do want to lower them due to a low fly ball matchup. I think it's a, a good flop lag situation. Like they, I was on them last night. They were terrible. They come back here in a worse matchup and do well. So maybe, maybe this is a good spot to buy back in and people are off them. But just straight up, I'd rank them fourth for stacking for today. Talked about the Red Sox and their COVID situation. The A's, very similar. They're dead. They were down a lot of guys yesterday. Uh, I think they had seven guys placed in the COVID IL. That includes Jed Lowry, who would have been a stacking option. They're facing Chris Ellis today, most likely. And Ellis struggled in the big leagues last year with a 52% hard hit rate allowed. So I'm okay with them broadly, the A's for today. Just keep in mind that they are pretty depleted and not necessarily in the best spot from a uh, DFS perspective due to some bodies they have lost recently. Finally, I'm not opposed to some Royals stacks today. They're facing Chris Archer, and Archer threw four shutout innings in his Twins debut, so that's good. But his swing and strike rate was 7.9%, led up a lot of hard contact, so it was similar issues to what he showed in that short spurt as a starter last year. The Royal salaries are very low, so I'm okay with dabbling in them here and seeing what happens. Again, weather in Kansas City, not ideal, but I think that for the most part, we're going to have to take some consolations of the weather. I think the one key exception is the Brewers for today. So the, the Brewers are the place to stack in good weather, and you'll have to make some consolations elsewhere for your batters for today. Let's finish up here with some home run calls for this slate. I was going to go with J.D. Martinez, my boring call, and that is boring. But I think I'm going to go Bobby Dahlbeck as my boring call. And like, I just feel really good about him for today, facing off against Kikuchi. Kikuchi can get some strikeouts. That could be a concern with Dahlbeck. But I just love like the 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 all-out profile Bobby Dahlbeck. So the boring home run call is a guy at $2,600. I'll go with it. Bobby Dahlbeck, the boring dinger call for today. The fun one, I'm going to go Omar Narvaez. I have like a soft spot for him with regards to DFS because like people hate using catchers on FanDuel for a good reason for the most part, but Narvaez actually has power. And in a good matchup, he's playing likely indoors for today. I think it's a good spot. So the home run calls officially for today, Bobby Dahlbeck and uh, Omar Narvaez. Maybe we'll get two out of Dahlbeck for today as well. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. 
But again, make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed to get these podcasts right as they go up each and every day to maximize that research time before you are locking in your lineups in case you decide you don't agree with what we say here on the show. If you've got questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sanes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your DFS lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again on Wednesday for another slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.